Hello everybody, this is Cheeseburger Jesus, and welcome back to Hello Charlotte. This should finally have us on track for the correct upload days. Going back to the computer. I bought tickets to that new thriller. Ellie, gross. Kill it yourself. That's better. <laughs> I bet the movie sucks. Yeah, it should be hilarious. Roasting Central Time. Always up for some roasting. Right? Now you're the one being gross. Meet me in front of the theater at 4 p.m. We'll visit the photo booth, too. Eat your photos. Got it. The movie was actually pretty good. Pfft, I can't believe you liked that. It was a train wreck at best. You just liked the romance subplot, didn't you? Hell no. Bingo. Jeez, by the way. I'm afraid there's a cafe that got super popular with couples. We're going there, right? Sure, anywhere you'd like. You're doing it so you'd brag about it with your friends later, aren't you? Eh. Teenagers, acne these days, pretty bad. Welcome to the Mademoiselle Cafe. We have special offers for cuppers. Couples. Cuppers? Cuppers! <laughs> Then we'll gladly take up on one. Right. Here, your order. Mint tea and two parfaits. Looks delicious. Chink. Goes the phone's shutter. Are you going to eat at all? Sure, sure. Hmm, hmm, what filter should Henry use? I'm digging in. Don't start eating without me. Henry hits my forehead with the side of her hand. Ow. Aren't couples supposed to be affectionate? As long as you don't act like a prick. Yeah, yeah, right. Henry's just using me to maintain her social status. I briefly wonder how it's not obvious to her that nobody really cares. Yet, I enjoy our time together. Even though I know our play-pretend relationship will shatter as soon as high school ends. Then we'll throw away each other like used napkins. Going back to the computer, I boot up the PC. Dag nab it. No more pills left. Writing that worthless fanfic again? It's not a fanfic, and it isn't worthless, Scarlet. It's illogical and pointless. You aren't even sure where you're taking the plot. Moreover, the cast is boring and repetitive, minus the main character. Who's mentally disabled anyways? Hey, don't insult my daughter. There's no concept of free will in this story to begin with. All the characters are controlled by the parasite. That's just you making up excuses for a failure of coherent storytelling. You're so annoying for a tulpa. Listen, even C complimented me. He's just being polite. And you know it. Charles, you're losing focus. You'll never pass the entrance exams if you keep doing unnecessary things like these. Say, are you giving up? Don't you want to become a doctor for mother's sake? Yes, yes I do. Very well. Now close that program, do the cleaning, and start studying for your tests. You know what will happen if you don't. Fine, fine, I know. Oh, a message from C. He's been acting weird lately, so... Give me five minutes, will you? Ugh. Five minutes only. I'm counting. No. No. I'll be leaving to the Heavenly Kingdom soon. I feel my blood gold cold. You sure? It's my final decision. I see. I'm sorry. I can't find the words to say. It's understandable. I'm sorry for burdening you like this. Are you scared? If you are, I'll be there for you. I'm your number one fan, remember? Two minutes left. Hold it, it's urgent. Will you really come? I will, trust me. It'll be the first and last time we meet in person, huh? Looks like it. I'm sorry. Don't be, Pat Pat. Thank you for understanding. It means a lot. Don't mention it. Have a good night's sleep, Ethereal Prince. Good night, Charlotte. Wait. Scarlet presses the off button. Hey! Time's up. Open your textbooks. This isn't the time for it. See, he he's going to... Oh, God. He's, he's going to die. You live on the third floor. I wonder how long it will take for you to recover after the fall. You wouldn't dare. Oh, but would I? You haven't even seen him in person. You have no clue what this person is like. Shut up. I'm not listening to you anymore. You never learn, huh? She drags me to the window. Her grip is strong. Apologize right now, and do what you're told. I'm counting to ten. One, two, three. 
If I fall now, I won't be able to see him. Four, five, six. I have to see him. I have to follow the schedule. Seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay? I won't do this again. Please let me meet him. Good, now go and do what you're told. Don't worry about a thing. I won't let you become a good for nothing. You'll pass the trial of flying colors. Her words are an array of meaningless letters. I slide down the wall, breathing heavily. That evening, I couldn't study at all. I need to check up on Mother. Mother, the weather is good today. Feel like going for a walk? I'm sorry, I don't feel like getting up. It's okay, you don't have to force yourself. Mm, I'm really sorry. Don't worry about it. How are you feeling? I'm fine. It's just that I'm afraid of getting up. Or doing anything for that matter. Is there a specific reason for it? Not really. I just start panicking and suddenly feel tired like never before. I see. Shouldn't the pills help? We've run out of them, remember? I signed up for an appointment, but you know how our healthcare system works. Just a month more to wait. Wish it came sooner, right? Right. I'm glad you understand. It's okay, Mother. I'll study hard and become a doctor. Then, you won't have to worry about anything. Don't push yourself too much, dear. Mm. Be a good girl, okay? I wake up unable to move my limbs. Oh, you're awake. <sighs> Well, of course. I stabbed you and threw you out the window. One would expect to have at least a few broken bones. The height wasn't great enough to kill you anyways. Eiler, what the actual hell? Hey, mind your manners. She kicks my broken leg, causing me to arc my back in pain. Why are you doing this? Hmm, why is it, I wonder? Maybe it's because I'm sick of you hurting others? Maybe it's because there's no one else left to punish you for your deeds? Oh, really? We're playing heroes and villains now. Hey, know your place. If you hurt Miss Warhol again, I'll break more than your legs. Oh, so she's the victim now. All right, all right, I'll shut up. But what in the world do you want to achieve by showing me all of this? <sighs> Don't feel so entitled. This show isn't for you at all. Scarlet looks at... Hello. Thank you for your attention. As you may have noticed, I'm aware of your presence in this world. By now, you should be aware that Miss Wiltshire has been terrorizing the whole floor for a long time. Shut it, Eiler. You don't know anything about this world or the person you're talking to. Just whom are you protecting? A bunch of NPCs whose only line is a laugh track. You're in no condition to speak. Why don't we beat you back into shape? Says Scarlet and crushes... With that done, we can have some privacy. You see, I have the most vivid memories of True Realm. So by using Link and connecting with Wiltshire, I can show you the truth of this world. And that's what you're here for, right? Just wait a little more, I'll show you everything. She turns to Charlotte's corpse. God, what am I even doing? This makes me no better than Wiltshire herself. But I can't protect anyone if I play by the rules. Well then, I'm going to need this eye. Slept well? Charles? Thank God. Oh my, did the world end? You're happy to see me? Well, yep, yeah, sort of. How did I end up in the infirmary? I found you lying unconscious in the garden, so I carried you here. What happened? Nothing much. Eiler wants to ruin my show. And she's obsessed with murdering me. Just like everyone in this godforsaken place. Is that so? This is strange. Why? How is she different from the tulpa that tormented you? Wait, how do you know about that? She was the one who linked with me. We'll talk about this later, okay? Just assume that I know about your past and give me the answer to my question for now. Just how is she any different? You see, this world's Scarlet Eiler is based on my imaginary construct of her. She's the sister I wanted to have, not the reflection of my own self that I wanted to disappear. She isn't supposed to be hostile. 
I can't fathom what could be driving her. Uh, how can you be so sure? I just now realized the music's not really recording that much. There we go. You have so many awful memories of her. And you expect her to be reborn as a sane person? Oh, whatever, I'm sick of this. I'll just use Mother's power and sort her out myself. Please try to refrain from doing that. I told you about the consequences, didn't I? Once you get your wish granted, your story will end immediately. Yeah, yeah, it's like a one-time use cheat code with hazardous consequences. Don't tell me what to do, okay? Besides, right now I just want to go home and sleep. Do you need me to accompany you? Nah, you talk too much. Aw. Plus, it's a new body anyway. I can move properly this time. Please remember that you shouldn't abuse this too. Yeah, yeah, take care. Hmm. I'm home. Oh well, bedtime. No. Oh god. Why? My educational program at school began. On Monday, I got left at in class. Tuesday, my bag stolen. Wednesday, dunked into the toilet. Thursday, assaulted in the changing room. Friday, I was made to eat dirt. Saturday, I decided. I will not give in. I will not become a victim. I will not get soaked in ugly colors. I will not become tainted. No matter what it takes, I will stay pure white. Oh, Dagnabbit. Hello, Bennett. Hello, Florence. I can't move a muscle. Do you think it will work? Shh, you'll wake her up. After this many sedatives? Ha! Human maggots sleeping like a log. Voices. Syringes. I have to keep quiet. In all honesty, I don't feel too good about this. I just hope that Uncle's theory is correct. Jeez, Mr. Honaker, you're always so sour. If memory cubes can be extracted, soul cubes can too, right? That's how it was in theory, at least. I do understand that he wants to discover the secret to immortality, but... Relax, it's not the first time we've done this, right? Besides, all she does is break things. Why is breaking her any different? I need a drink. Then soap it is. You should seriously cut down on it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Come on. It's not like she'll wake up any soon. No, wait, they gave me time to escape? No, this must be a coincidence. They don't care about me. In any case, I have to get out. I have a bad feeling about this. If Huxley's involved and Aiden's gone completely mental, I have nobody to rely on. My head's spinning. What kind of drug was that? I barely can move a muscle. Oh, God. There's an air vent. I need to get up there. Oh, no, I've messed it up. Okay. Items. Yeah, this is rather stressful. Alright, I'm good to go. Get into the vent, yes. Maybe I should wait here until morning comes. What do you mean, she's gone? She has to be around somewhere. I know, I know, jeez. She isn't that good at hiding, as far as I know. Let's look around a bit. I'll run poison gas through the ventilation just in case. Crap, I have to get out of here. Oh my. This is where most of my bodies go. Oh yeah, I think I can tell, Charlotte. Let's rethink this. Yeah, I'm hiding in the pile of bodies. Ah, there she is. These are just corpses, Ben. They're always here. Are they? 
Plus, Dr. Huxley wouldn't like if we touched his experiment material. Let's look somewhere else. Looks like they left, but it may be a trap. I have to be careful with the timing. Can't wait too long, but can't make hasty decisions either. Then wait a little? Yes. Get out now? Let's go. I need to get out. If only I could reach the elevators. Wait a minute. I've messed up already. Go, 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 go. Initiating eye scan. Two, four, two. Make it quick. Okay, so I, I made it. Here you are. Next moment I know, Scarlet hits my head with a baseball bat. Dag nabbit. At least the game knows how to make you stressed out. I, I, that's okay, I guess. 10.30 a.m. It's a sunny day outside. I greet C with a small hand wave and let out a sigh of relief. Thank God, his face isn't distorted. He flinches, his whole body becomes tense, but as soon as he realizes it's me, he loosens up a little. Are you alright? God, what am I even saying? Of course he isn't. Yes, it's nothing. For a second, I thought I'm being pranked. Thank you for coming, I really appreciate it. To be honest, I didn't think I could do it alone. Don't mention it. C is shorter than me. For some reason, I always thought he'd be the taller one out of us, too. It was just a flight of stairs, but he's completely out of breath. Looks like P.E. isn't your best subject. Seems like it. Are you disappointed I look like this? No, you don't look like a Lovecraftian nightmare to me, I don't say. Gods, look at you. The only difference there is between you and your icon are those deep eye bags. And well, you're a midget, that counts too. It's you who should be disappointed in me, Mr. C. <laughs> you're, you're more vitriolic in real life. This is the sad reality of online chats. Charlotte turned out to be Charles. Whoops. But you wanted to see a girl of your dreams. Mm. I don't think bodies or names are that important. It's you who's standing before me right now, and it's all that matters. And honestly, I'm only relieved. We're more alike than I initially thought. If you say so. Too bad you don't know Scarlet Eiler. By the way, may I ask for your name? Like, not an online handle? Ah, sure. It's Vincent. I see. It's nice to meet you, Charles. Likewise. I'm glad I got to meet you in person before you. Ah. An awkward pause falls between us. I wait for an explanation, a crack in his defenses, a breakdown. But none comes. There's only the deafening silence. I have to say something. Anything. May I ask, how did you come up with this? The whole universe birth theory. Ah. He gathers himself a little. I've thought a lot about it, and concluded that our souls are the source material for universes confined in our bodies. When a person dies, their soul data gets released and explodes like a big bang. Then a new universe is born. It can become a hellish place, or one alike to paradise, depending on your mind's state. That's why there's myths of heaven and hell. So it's like a world that consists entirely of you? One could put it that way, yes. Everything that you were, were inside gains shape and form as life is born. So it's entirely possible that our world is just someone's mind taking shape. Exactly. And I'm not against the possibility that the entirety of our life was scripted in advance. Then the cruel gods up above would definitely laugh at us both. That would just be just the worst, don't you think? <laughs> right. But then, the ending to our stories would be already predetermined. Say, what would you do if you became a god? I'd cleanse this disease-stricken world of all contamination. I... I don't think I'm cut out for that. Gods are creators. Even when I tried to write my own story, all I did was take your setting and twist it to my liking. I'm not original at all. And my writing has too many plot holes and pandering. My source protagonist is a little girl, too. Everyone and their dog has done it already. Even when writing villains, I end up falling into cliches like demons and contracts and such. Allow me to argue with you on this matter. 
It's not the originality of an idea, but it's execution that matters the most. It's so easy to dismiss concepts as overused. But isn't it a wonderful feeling when you accomplish making a sincere story? Moreover, I believe everyone can get better with time. Says C himself, a web celebrity. <laughs> right, well then. Vincent looks down, he's barely holding up. I take off my glove and reach out. It's the only way of comfort I know. In the corner of my eye, I see him blinking vigorously. Oh. I want to take him away from this awful place somewhere, anywhere, but I stop myself. It's not my decision to make. I don't know what he went through, or what his living circumstances are. Scarlet Eiler was right. I know nothing about Vincent. All I've ever seen was his blinding icon on the screen. I don't know him at all. Vincent smiles at me. I know what death feels like. White is truly a cruel color. Uh, well... See you in the Heavenly Kingdom? See you. Hey, Vince. You don't have to do this. Why become a god of an unknown place when you're already the god of my world already? Don't you know space is empty? Don't you know nothing exists beyond this world? Then it occurs to me. Maybe he doesn't believe in anything. Then maybe he made up that story just to convince himself that it's going to be okay. Maybe all he wanted was to... He lets go of my hand. Vin... Too late. I lose my balance and lean forward a little. Fear overwhelms me. I feel weak in my knees and stagger back, falling to on the concrete floor, panting heavily. In the end, I let go of his hand. I couldn't follow him anywhere. I live for Mother, and that's how it should always be. I can't leave this world before she does, and that's what I decided for myself long ago. Scarlet Eiler's sighing behind my back. She's muttering something along the lines of, Good riddance, get back here, and you idiot. Didn't I take the pills? Vincent fell. I called the ambulance and ran. Ran, ran away. All ended well. There was nothing to be sad about. In a far, far away land lived the quiet god. He never uttered a single word and lived his life in solitude. It was his creations who lumped it together and couldn't stop talking. He must be sad, said a few. He must be suffering, pondered some. He must be lonely, claimed many. But contrary to their beliefs, the quiet god was happy. Surrounded by a comfortable silence, wandering in the space abyss, he pondered many things, like, how could they endure all this noise, or how could they use languages not to connect but to hurt each other, and how could they feel so alone when they're surrounded by so many, and when the quiet god got tired, the darkness engulfed him, and held him in its embrace without a word. As his followers cried, how cruel, how unforgiving he is, the quiet god slept, Can't you leave me alone already? There's no way I'm going to do that. Not after what happened. It's getting harder to breathe all over again. I desperately ga grasp for air. Trying to stay conscious. Trying to stay sane. All I see before me is Vincent's body. Human, real. Mangled on the ground. He's gone. Gone, 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 gone. You really are a worthless child. I knew meeting that person would be a bad influence on you. He should have protected you from him. It's you whom I need protection from, you monster. Say, why won't you disappear? Scarlet Eiler obstructs my line of vision and cups my face in her hands. They're cold as ice. Hey, listen. I'm here because I'm the only one who can save you. Without me, you won't amount to anything. Do what I say and we'll be fine. Forget about this false god of yours and think of the person who's always been there for you. You know who I'm talking about, don't you? I cover my ears and try not to scream. Less than two years. Here we go. 531 days until the trial. Enters on her phone, observed in social networks. Nothing out of the ordinary. <laughs> Look, the drama I sent you yesterday. Oh my god, this really blew up. Right? <laughs> That's mob mentality for you. Our laughs are strained, unnatural. We sit in silence for a while. Listen, I know it might not be time for it, but there's something I haven't told you yet. What is it? We're moving to another town next month. Believe me, I tried to talk to my parents, but they never listen. Is it far from here? Around six hours by bus. I see. So you're leaving too, huh? This means the end of our play pretend relationship. You know, Charlie? 
I wish I could go far, far away from here. From my brother, my parents, the girl groups I'm in. I'm so tired. Tired, tired, tired. That's all you ever say. How the world's unfair. How everyone's unfair. It's not my fault, boo-hoo. I'm sick and tired of your complaining. I've never met your shut-in brother to begin with. He could be a corpse for all I know. Charlie? Henry? I know. Why don't we run away together? Are you for real? Yeah, I'm serious. Well, I can book a hotel. Let's skip to school tomorrow, alright? Thus we set out on a journey. Alright, that's all the time I have to record for today. And, so, this has been a pretty interesting bit of the game. It really makes me think. So, that's all the time I have to record for today. So this is Cheeseburger Jesus signing out. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. That was a really depressing goodbye, but I'm, I'm not going to repeat it. I'm, I'm lost in thought, basically. I'll see you in the next video.